Hey, welcome back. Big show today. Connor Daly. Hello. Joey. Thanks big for being show. back with this big show to the big show. Uh, we got a lot to talk about, man. It's been, uh, for various reasons, it's been a little bit, it's been over a week since we recorded last, but it's race week. It is indeed race week. We're very, very excited about uh, getting down to Nashville. I mean, I know you're going. I know I'm going mm -hmm. for sure. I have to do some work down there. And uh, it's going to be awesome. There's been a lot going on. Obviously, we've got, you know, we were a little late recording this because you were doing really cool stuff with the Pittsburgh Steelers. So I completely I understand that. And I, I mean, you're working, You, I mean, you were doing stuff with a, a professional uh, football team. So mm -hmm. that was more than what I was doing. What were you? Well, first, before I find out what you're <laughs> yeah. doing, we got we got some news that broke in the racing world that we're going to get to before we recorded. We recorded on Tuesday. Connor's getting ready to go down to Nashville. I'm following him a couple of days from now, uh, heading down there on Thursday for the weekend. Um, so we're going to hit on some race news, of course. Uh, we got a little WTFI news, a story that I think perhaps you could relate to maybe i don't want to i don't want to speak for you <laughs> all right but we'll get to the bottom of it and then uh, red yellow green is uh you know as well and then the uh, ricky treadway random mini 500 driver of the week so very excited about it what were you doing last week well um I, I don't even remember at this point last week i was probably in the simulator we're doing a lot of simulation of nashville uh doing some work some real work which is uh which is important um and and yeah and, and it's been awesome i think the preparation for nashville is very very exciting we're looking forward to that racing track um and and yeah it's 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 gonna be interesting How, so when did you start on the simulator for nashville just last week was that the first time yes so we got uh, about three days uh on the sim uh well by, by two and a half and uh, that's basically as much as we can do. It's the realest thing we can do. Uh, Chevrolet, our, our engine partner, they, uh, they, they try to go down and scan the streets of Nashville, mm -hmm. basically. Just scan the streets and, uh, and then try to make up what the track might look like. And, uh, and they did a pretty good job, I think. So it'll be interesting to see what it, if it relates to real life. Um, but, I, I mean, I, I, I can't wait to get there. I mean, no matter what, even if the track is a complete, like, mess the event people are still gonna have a great time everyone's gonna go and everyone's everyone's gonna have fun yeah so that's what i'm i'm uh i'm most looking forward to and there yeah. are worse places to have a race than in nashville exactly you know? <laughs> yeah yeah but i mean i i would rather hear about your time with the pittsburgh steelers at the moment because again professional football team you're yeah. doing big things i saw you doing cool videos with people that make a lot of money yeah and catch balls and throw balls and Yes. Do other stuff. Tackle with, people um, with balls. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That. Which is a respectable effort. Yeah. No, man. It was awesome. Obviously, you know the world who follows the the people in the world who follow me know Pittsburgh Steelers are a very big part of my life. <laughs> big Steelers guy. Big big Steelers guy. I got tattooed <laughs> on me forever uh, for the camera there. Um, so I got to go out there first training camp that I got to cut. I've, I've done training camp with the Colts for like the past five years. Respectable. Yep. And then um, this is the first time I got to do it with the Steelers. So it was a blast. Got to talk to Juju Smith Schuster, Chase Claypool, uh, TJ Watt. So there's some, you know, the Steelers hooked me up. I mean, let's be real. I love that. They, they 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 gave me. I mean, besides big bold big Ben Roethlisberger, <laughs> I think those are like the three biggest names that I could have gotten. And I old got big them. Ben. Yeah. So it was very fun. But they didn't give you a backpack, which is a shame. They did <laughs> not. I did get a new one. I do notice uh, down you have there a new in the backpack. streets of Pittsburgh. <laughs> um, I, I I I needed a new one, and I got one at a little you know, uh, Yinzer District shop that was like half off from the pro shops because you know how them pro shops be, dude. It's a hustle, man. I tell you what, it's I've I've bought some NFL merch before, and I'm like, how is this three figures? You know I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, it. just raking you over the coals for uh, all they can. Are you a Colts fan, by the way? Well, yes, kind I am of? a Colts fan. No, I I am. Uh, but I also like I, I I grew up in Indianapolis, so I was inherently cheering for the Colts. But I also I'm an underdog. I'm an underdog guy. I like to cheer for the underdogs. Okay. And when I was growing up, the Bengals did not win any games. <sighs> So I know this probably puts us at at a, at an at an interesting impasse, but uh, I was a Bengals guy growing up, 
I have an Andy Dalton signed jersey, the Red Rocket. I have a Corey Dillon jersey. I have an Ocho Cinco jersey. <laughs> Respect Corey I have, Dillon. I have Ocho Cinco O's, a box of uh, Chad, Chad Ocho Cinco's cereal. Oh, so um, I was a Bengals fan, and I know that's probably not sitting well here, but uh, I still like sucks. to support. You know, I, I don't want to go away from the roots. You know what I mean? It just sucks so badly. <laughs> but at least it's not at least it's not a Browns fan. So yeah, I, I mean, I figured that would be worse, it, much worse. Yeah. Uh, so I did not know that about you though. But that's all right. I mean, I, like I said, I respect the Corey Dillon jersey. Yeah, I, Corey Dillon was was my guy. Like, he was he was the only star on that team at the time. But you also have a Jerome Bennis jersey. I do. So you just, I have a jersey. I have a small NFL jersey collection. I'm not gonna lie. You like just big motherfuckers who tote the rock and run people over. Corey you would Dillon be blown away at what NFL jerseys I have in my collection. What's would you like to know one? a few of them? You please. So, Mike Allstott. <laughs> <laughs> Again, <Big> fella. <laughs> just running motherfuckers <laughs> over. Big guy. Uh, Mark Brunel. Whoa. <laughs> why? <laughs> yep. Don't know, honestly. <laughs> Again, underdog guy. Just I was cheering for the underdogs. Yeah. All the team jerseys I have are bad teams, honestly, from the mid, from the early 2000s and late 90s bad teams. Dude, it sounds, I mean, I'm huge. So me and Polizzi, we call we call them uh, fucky fits. <laughs> so it's just what's the most fucky jersey that you can have. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it's just like, you know when you see it, when you're at a day drinking party <laughs> and somebody rolls in with the Mark Burnell Jaguars jersey from yeah. 1998, you're like, oh, that's a fucky fit right there. So there you, it is. You're, you're just, you're, uh, you're a cat captain on the squad for this yeah uh there's there's a couple others too i have every single randy moss jersey that he ever wore with every team even a raiders jersey i have them all san francisco 49ers jersey i have them all i was a big randy moss guy big course, randy straight moss cash guy. Homie. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah um still to this day he's my favorite nfl player i think of all time that's sick um and I tell you what, there are a couple others in there i think i have a cardinals jersey from someone i forget but I gotta I gotta get it out because I, I I promise you I have like about fifteen jerseys in this uh, case that are some of them are just so random. I need to we need to like do a video <laughs> of this. Yeah, just go. Mike Allstott though, I met him at the St. Pete race oh, at one point, nice. and I said, Mike, I'm not gonna lie, man, I got one of your jerseys. Yeah, <laughs> let's go Bucks. You know what I mean? Absolutely. <laughs> he was like, he was like, Are you serious? I was like, Yep, I do have a Mike <laughs> Allstott jersey, dude. Because we're about, I mean, we're, we are practically the same age. So I feel like when we were in school growing up, the two jerseys that were like the most badass to have was like a Mike Vick Falcons jersey. I have one. Yeah. Yeah, I got one. I had a red one. It was the best thing ever. I got in third grade for Christmas. But then also a Mike Allstott. It was like oh, Mike yeah. Vick and Mike Allstott. Yep. Those were the jerseys to have. I do also believe now that now that we're just talking about stuff, I, I definitely had a Donovan McNabb jersey as well. <laughs> I don't know why, but I just I was just I, I w- every year for Christmas I would ask for jerseys. Absolutely, yeah. And I was a big wide receiver guy for a while, um, but uh, but yeah, I, I just I, I was all over it, man. That's sick, dude. Yeah, I, I would love to do like a a, a cribs edition jer- almost <laughs> of just like at your place unsealing yeah. the vault of jerseys and just going through them. Man. Oh yeah, 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 that would yeah. that would be some uh, that would be very fun. And then I, 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 just to finish my NFL collection, um, I have a Detroit Lions helmet signed by Jim Harbaugh Saw and that. a Michigan. I didn't go to college. So, but I, but Jim Harbaugh was a close family friend of ours. And so Jim Harbaugh has sent me a, an autographed Michigan helmet and an autographed Detroit Lions helmet because that was the last time he, that's, that was the last team he played with the NFL, in the NFL. And I was at one of his last games to watch him play. See, I didn't realize I, that that's on me for not even realizing my NFL history because I didn't, I was kind of like, when he gave you a Lions helmet that like yeah. he didn't even play for them. But he did. <laughs> yeah. I didn't yeah. That was that. his last, uh, last NFL team. Yeah. We got, I remember I still was a little infant. I was at one of his last games. Yeah. Cause Jim Harbaugh, for, for those who don't know, was involved with Panther racing, the IndyCar team, uh, that mm-hmm. my stepdad was involved with back in many, many years ago. Um, and Jim's a big race fan. Still to this day, one of the greatest text messages I've ever received is from Jim Harbaugh the morning of my very, very first Indy 500. It was just the most incredible coach speak that I've ever had. And I still have it in my phone to this day. Should I read it? For, Please. I read yeah, it I was going to say, can we, so give us the, the background here. Your first Indy 500 was 2013. Yes. Tony Kanan brought it home. Yes, he did. And I have a great picture that Tony Kanon did autograph. Oh yeah, yeah. This is this is it. 
Man, I mean, so so the morning of the five. So you said the morning of the five hundred. This this text comes through. Yep. from old Jim Hart. Now, do you have his contact, or is it a random number that says, "Hey, this is Jim"? Nope. Uh, we, I had got his number from my stepdad, and I said, "Hey," because uh, he had texted my stepdad. I guess is saying, "Hey, congrats, Connor made the field." You know what I mean? We made the race, and he says this. Uh, for a first message, he said, Connor, thanks for texting. What time? Hold on. What time is this sent? On this the is 12.35 uh, p.m. on May 20th, 2013. Okay. Which I never delete anything from my phone. Yeah. He said, Connor, thanks for texting. Can't tell you how thrilled I am for you. Congrats on your success. I can't wait to watch you compete on Sunday. Great things are going to happen for you. Your friend, Jim Harbaugh. I said, thanks, man. It will be great to catch up with you. It'll be such a cool weekend. He says, this is, this is where it gets real. This is where it gets real intense. Yes, indeed. Who could possibly have it better than you? Nobody. Attack with enthusiasm unknown to mankind while making cool-headed decisions. You're ready. You're trained. You have the courage and have prepared. Great things will happen. <laughs> oh, good. man. I mean, I'm ready to jump through the wall. man. Let's that's go, Jim. Good, dude, that is sick. <laughs> I mean, that's that's I, electric. I want to see the screen. Can I show the screenshot? Wow, <laughs> this is big time. Nova. <laughs> I mean, the, I felt I, I have never been more ready for a race in my life, and I was like, I'm never going to delete this message. Have prepared. Great things will happen. That. <laughs> Wow. Now he did spell your wrong every did, time, yeah. but that's that doesn't matter. He was using the possessive form of yeah. your instead of the <laughs> I don't know what it's called. Yeah, but we'll overlook that. He's you he don't got time for grammar. He's a coach. Yeah, he's trying to fire you up. Exactly. And I tell you what, I, that was that was great text receipt. You need to like life. you need to you need to blow that up a little bit. Print it off. You know, like an eight by ten or something. Yeah, hang Frame it on my that, wall. Hang it there. Yeah, you know, right next to you. Stare at, maybe in your bathroom. Like, well, you know, at gyms they have like at the gym that I go to. Sometimes they got quotes from like uh, George Washington on the wall and like very famous coaches. You know, and, and in, like very just strong leaders. Mm -hmm. This would be one of those quotes that I would put on my wall. Yep, that's I I love that. That's like uh, he gave you the Harbaugh mantra. The Harbaugh's yeah. that's their big. Who's got it better than us? Nobody. Like that's yeah. A, yeah, nobody had better than you, man. No, you I mean I made I'm, the field. Yeah, we made it. the field. <laughs> we were in the race. I mean, it didn't go great. We were on fire most of it, but it was. <laughs> it, I was inspired. I was still inspired. Let me absolutely. tell you something. Yeah, I mean, we're big football guys here. <laughs> absolutely, we're big yeah. football guys for here. sure. That's uh, yeah. So wow, Jim Harbaugh, uh, close friend of the of, of the pod. Close, the yeah, Jim Harbaugh, close friend of the podcast, obviously. I would be afraid um, to interview him, though. Honestly, he's a he, dude. He's a, a gentle soul. He's an interesting bird, you know. A gentle soul, and I haven't talked to him in a long time. And I would love to love to reconnect. I feel like he would be like very cool and nice to you, and then anytime I ask him something, he'd be like, <laughs> "What? What?" You know, he'd just be a, kind of a kind of a dick. We're at practice. Yeah, <laughs> like he wouldn't know. You know, he. Yeah, I saw a tweet one time. Somebody was like, "Jim Harbaugh always looks like he's thinking about whether or not he turned the oven off at home." <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I mean, yeah, that's fair. I guess it's true. It's a pretty important <laughs> thing to think about, you know. That is very, very important. Yeah, I, um, I, yeah, I, I've, I've, I've been, I've been lucky to meet some, you know, football players and coaches and stuff like that, but, uh, but definitely have not had the type of of relationship with any of those guys that we have with uh, with Jim, which was really cool. So absolutely. Man. We're football guys here. This is a football podcast, obviously. What color is the Mark Brunel jersey, real quick? It's green. Oh, man. <laughs> it's green, obviously. That teal Brunel, that is... Well, I would also get jerseys that looked the coolest, I uh -huh. think, as well. Like, sure. I didn't want to have, like, just a, a Bears jersey with a stripe on it, you know Colts what I mean? Jersey. Like, well, no, I have, a, I have plenty of Colts jerseys. <laughs> I got a Marvin Harrison jersey. I got a Reggie Wayne jersey. I got a Peyton Manning jersey and an Andrew Luck jersey, obviously. Whoops. Yeah, that all didn't go great. Do you think the Colts are cursed? While we're talking oh, about it, I, that's so sad. Old Carson Wentz going down. Oh, I, I, I really felt for our team because it seemed like there was a lot of great mojo. Carson waved the green flag for the Indianapolis Grand Prix, uh -huh. like he was part of these part of the community, he's part of the racing family. Now he's waving green flags for us. Yep. Oh man, he's waving just, green flags right now. He's got the red flag. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's, he'll be in our section coming up, and we, he's got the red flag. <laughs> We're shutting it down for him. Shutting it know. down. It's not looking good for the boys, but uh, yeah, I mean, Jacob to, Eason though. We're big Jacob Eason guys now. <laughs> Why not, man? Yeah. he's got a big old arm. He'll sling the rock. <laughs> fucking chug it. <laughs> I can chug it. Football, man. Yeah, um, he played at Georgia, right? He did for a year, <laughs> and then he went to Washington. Good for Washington, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. He's uh, he was a guy on draft day. 
that I think didn't uh, show some, up. No, it was something. It was down in his basement. I remember there's like a story about it. He had his girlfriend and his dad there, and uh, I have to look it up. I'm just digressing <laughs> now. It's not a great story. Yeah, I mean, we we got a hey, positive energy for the Colts. Yeah. We we appreciate what they're doing. We're we're Indiana guys, you know what I mean. But uh, cheers to 2023. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but Super Bowl 2023. Yeah, uh, my my time with the Steelers though was interesting. It was fun. It was you know, there's a couple things that I don't like about the NFL. And one now I'm thinking about it is the fandom. And what I mean by that is. You know, I'm doing this cool shit, right? Like I'm hanging out, talking with Juju Smith-Schuster and Chase Claypool and then TJ Watt. And I'm like down on the field talking to these guys of my favorite all-time team. Like, you know, pretty pretty sick deal, right? And like all of the comments and the responses, you know, half of them at least are just people like, these dudes are bums. Go make them, <laughs> go tell them, make some TikToks, go Browns. I'm like... These dudes are bums. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> bro, like, I, I, I'm just so sick of it, man. Like, NFL fandom is just the worst, you know? It's like, very aggressive. It's aggressive, and it just, like, takes on a whole life. It's like people's total personality is who they root for as an NFL team. Yeah. And it's like, you know, because I root for the Steelers, you got people who are just like, go Browns, you fucking pussy, you suck. <laughs> Juju Smith Schuster's a clown, and so are you. And I'm like, <laughs> Dude, can you not just admit that, like, that's pretty cool? <laughs> happy Friday. Yeah, happy Friday. <laughs> like, that's one of the reasons that, like, I love IndyCar. I feel like, in, you know, IndyCar's just grown on me so much. Is It's just, like, it's just a whole happy group of community. It just wants the drivers to have a good race. And, yeah, they got your favorite drivers, but they're not going to yeah. be like, oh, you're a Connor Daly fan? Fuck you. You suck. Like, he, he's a clown, you know? like I mean, getting- I think some people do say that. <laughs> So there are, I, but like it's just but not, not as, as aggressive, not as aggressive, and not as prominent. You know, yeah. It's like I said, it's you know on on like race day, the Indy Five Hundred. Sure, you know if somebody's wearing their daily shirt or or a New Garden hat or whatever, it's like you're rooting for those guys, you know. And and I'm rooting for those both of you guys. guys yeah. But like then all of a sudden, if Elio Castroneves is making the track down for his fourth, everybody's just like, oh, let's go, Elio. Like this is cool. Yeah, exactly. I I, I like that a lot. I think they're now. I I definitely do receive some hatred on the internet. Understandably so. Sure. Everyone does. If you're if you're being talked about, someone's going to hate on it, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's you know that's understandable. But for sure, I think the 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 funny thing about fans like that is usually it's just on the internet. I think in real life, the NFL, there will be people that come to games and like will throw some shade at you directly, like in person. Sure. I have never once gone to an IndyCar race and had any of these people on the internet that, that you know, throw some shade at me or talks, uh, talk some, some negative words at me. Never have I had them come up to me in real life. Actually, the, <laughs> the first person that I, I, mid-Ohio, the last race, there was a person that when I got announced up onto the, um, up onto the driver intro stage, it's like some claps, you know what I mean? And then I heard one person, Boo. <laughs> and I was like, I said, uh, whoever booed can eat shit. <laughs> and some of the people, some of the people um on the on the on the little front row, they're like, yeah, all right. Hey, I like that. Let's, let's go. go. <laughs> and there so you go. it was, but like no one on the internet that usually says as much of the terrible things as, as they could say come at you in real life. Whereas yeah. in the NFL, I do believe that does happen. But IndyCar, it's a little bit more of a respectable community. Yes. I think in general. Well, not that the NFL fan base is a non-respectable community. No, it I is. Think you got 100 re- million percent. <laughs> but you got really passionate fans. Yes, you do. But like when it becomes these people's entire personality and like <laughs> li- livelihood and like what they mark themselves as, you got a problem. That's true. Like, hey, guy. With a dog as your profile picture, that you're 40, <laughs> or an egg. You're 48 years old. Take a step back from you know toting the Browns yeah. uh, water for just two seconds. You know, like yeah. go go to your job. You know, spend time with your kids. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now walk your fucking dog. That yeah. is your profile picture. <laughs> you know what I mean? Take little Samantha out there. I mean, come on, the dog needs some attention. You're right. Like just put the put the pom poms down for the Browns for a second and live your life. You know. Yeah. I mean, so that that's my only thing. 
Yeah, but, I mean, we we could definitely start a campaign for less internet hate in general, but yeah, let's, you know, we'll start that later. Okay. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, another thing that I don't like is, and it really drove the point home just in my time out there, you know, let me make this clear. Everybody, the, the, the Pittsburgh PR folks were great. The Pittsburgh media relation folks were great. The Indeed. Steelers social media team, fantastic. But the 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 folks, the the guys who cover teams, the guys who would call themselves, you know, uh, as my buddies from part of my take say, like Big J journos, you know, like B- Big J journalists, they also need to kind of just like step back a second and and you know get off Mount Pius and not hold themselves in such high regard. <laughs> wow. wow, Mount Pius. Boy. Mount Pius really got you. <laughs> <laughs> it's such, Mount Pius is fucking erupting here. Uh, and, and they don't need to hold themselves in such high regard, dude. It's like, I can't take it, man. Being in a press box is just the absolute worst thing possible. <laughs> like I was telling you, like, it's just like you're a freshman in high school and you. You know, you're walking through the cafeteria with your plate of chicken fries and everybody's looking at Salisbury you. Steak, Salisbury steak. Salisbury steak. Yep. Everybody, you know, everybody is like, and, and and they probably aren't, but a good amount of them probably are looking at you, whispering. Who's this guy? Looking at this guy, having a snarky comment. It's a very judgmental zone, man. It is yeah. very intimidating. I could, I could see that, and and I, I'm glad that you made the decision to go down into the into yes. the stadium. You know yes. what I mean? I was like, once I saw you start, to, you did that Instagram live where you're like, honestly, you kind of seem like a a kid in a candy store for a little bit there, which I thought was quite funny. You're like, oh, hey there, uh, Juju. Hey there, yeah. like, uh, <laughs> hey there boys. Like, yeah, how's it going? Exactly. I, was like, I was like, is Joey the only person down there? <laughs> like, what's going Pretty on Pretty much, yeah. yeah. I respect that, though. You got to get in the action. I was the same way growing up with racing. I said, look, I could watch up in the suite. I could do that. There's some televisions, air conditioning, maybe a couple of cold waters. But no way. I was front row seats if I could get them. I'm down in the action. Don't care if I couldn't hear the announcers at all. I just wanted to see the cars. I wanted to be involved. I wanted to be in the action. It's just not the same. Yeah. It's not it, the same. It, when you're when you're up there, you're it's a, that's a totally different world. You gotta be down in it, man. You gotta in be down heat. in it to 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 appreciate it. Exactly. Uh, have you been keeping up with the Olympics? Oh, yes. This is something that I would uh I'm very, very proud of. Uh my cousin, Nikki Daly. Um, has been competing actually since our last episode that we recorded. Uh, she has been competing and is already out of the Olympics. <laughs> but you know what? They had a great run. She was there. Uh, Team Ireland. So it, they they were playing uh, women's Olympic field hockey, which not very popular in America. Um, I can imagine it's fairly popular in Ireland. Uh, of everywhere else in the world, apparently. Every- <laughs> yeah, I, I believe it is like India's national sport as well, okay. which I heard. Uh, from uh, an, an Indian man on my team, on my race team. Um, and, but it it was, I, I have had to watch games on the NBC Sports app, like at one in the morning, mm-hmm. at seven in the morning, because I was watching everyone live, right? It's pool play. So we had, That's we dedication. got four games. You got Ireland versus South Africa. Boom, W, right off the bat, we got a win. Mm-hmm. I was like, here we go. We're, we're going to the medal stand. Yeah. But, you know, then we played, the Netherlands, which is the best team in the world, and we lost. And then it just, it was a downward spiral. It was tough, tough to watch. Very close games. We lost by one to India, and then we lost by two to Germany. We lost by two to Great Britain. Now, do you root more for Ireland or America? Well, only, well, I mean, I'm an American man, right? But I, my cousin's Irish, and the team Ireland, I was, I was respecting those Irish gals running around there. Yeah. And I, I mean, I'm, I have an Irish passport as well, so like, I, I, there is a lot of Irish in me. You know what I mean? And absolutely, it was really cool to see, uh, you know, a family member in the Olympics. Like, I it was, it was awesome. Like, you just, you know, what stage that is, and and the fact that you know when you see that, like the broadcast, like here we go, Ireland versus Germany or whatever, like that. Like, I was like, man, this is like really cool. Yeah. And I'm a big field hockey guy now. How close were you to this? Are you to this cousin? Like, are we celebrating Christmas together? Or yeah, what? I mean, we did every year. For really? Sure. She's about two years older than me, I think. Um, and uh, and yeah, and so like all of her social handles are twenty two, like mine. You know, Nikki Daly twenty two. She was number twenty two. I was number twenty two, and everything I did. Cool. For a while. Um, and, and yeah, so, and, and, and she also came over to work in Indy Lights as well as an engineer. She's huh. an engineer also. Wow. So she's come Woman over to racing world. Talents. She loves racing. Yeah. Her dad, my uncle also raced as well. Um, and, and yeah, so very, very incredibly athletic family. And I was so proud of her. She was out there. They got, they got a win and you know what? They didn't get a medal. 
which is fine. But field hockey is an electric sport. I'm not going to lie. I was watching these girls running around, whacking each other with wooden sticks. I mean, it was cr- just crazy. That's the thing is I remember playing field hockey in, you know, PE class growing up. And it was always the most brutal sport because everybody was just, like you said, just hacksawing at oh. each other with these things. And your shins would just get totally beat to Unbelievable. shit. I, I, I was watching some of this stuff. I'm like, man, I started taking notes on it. I was like, I, I wrote down like how many passes the other team gave away compared to how many passes nice. like our team gave away. I was like couch coaching, you know what I mean? Which is always wrong, obviously. Yep. Anytime you're doing that is is wrong. Um, but but realistically, the one of the most proud moments that I did have was I, I read a Barstool article yesterday. Oh, okay. <laughs> read a Barstool article that said uh, there were some – Olympic athletes getting in trouble for uh, for for drinking, maybe partying in the Olympic Village. Sure. And um, it was my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> Simply put, just get down to uh, it. I'm not gonna lie. Like I was, I was texting her over the weekend. I was, I was celebrating my buddy's birthday, and I was texting. Her. I said, "Hey, we're watching field hockey," and she's like, uh, "Well, we're having a great time out here. I got some photographs of the uh, the official beer of the Olympics and stuff like that over there. That they yes. were having and." Uh, yeah, I, I I was like, hey, so I sent her a screenshot of the article. I was like, this is definitely you guys, right? And she's like, yep, Team Ireland got a reprimand. And I said, oh, my gosh. And she's on a flight home now, so I don't know if they got kicked out or she's not going to the closing wow. ceremonies or what. But I, uh, I'm i very, very proud of the Irish ladies because uh, you know what? Once they were done, it's time to enjoy the Olympic Village. Absolutely, time to enjoy the yeah. uh, the Olympics. You know, you got uh, you, a lot of people worrying about people banging in there, but the Irish. She are did just send like, me a picture of the cardboard beds. Yeah, they are, they are real, real yeah. cardboard beds. I couldn't believe it. It looked like a it looked like they were staying in some sort of like <laughs> gypsy palace. I that, don't know what was going on there. That's unfortunate for Olympic athletes. It's like, come on. They deserve better than just a get them a real bed. bed. They need a bed. They, they got to perform. And I know. Always the one, right? They got to go. Like, yeah. Uh, that's what part of the reason you work four years to go to the Olympics is so you can, yes, perform on the field or track or whatever it is. <laughs> but then, I mean, you got this whole of the best athletes, the hottest people out there. Let's I go. am so proud of her. I'm yeah. so proud of her and the team. Great group of people. And I'm, I, you know what? I am so glad they had an incredible time out there. You know what I mean? Going to the Olympics, might as well get kicked out, right? Well, yeah, I, mean, I know. I don't think they got kicked Maybe out. They didn't get but kicked out, but I'm saying let's let's get reprimanded. You know, what I mean, let's push the limits a little bit. This is a, this is a you know a once in a lifetime opportunity. No better team than the Irish to get in trouble for exactly. a little drinking. Exactly. Yeah. Right? I mean, I think yeah. that made their country if I, proud. If I could read to you some of these messages, they are hilarious. <laughs> and they met some incredible people too. You know what I mean? Like they're out there with the other Olympic athletes, like the. The female Olympic sprinter from Jamaica or whatever who broke the world uh-huh. record in the 100 meter, they all got a picture with her. Like, nice. I was like, oh, that's awesome. Like, you get, you're you going to remember that for the rest of your life. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So it's uh, it's stuff like that. Now will they be back in 2024? Are they going to qualify? No, nah, it, it, my cousin's done for the she's, hockey. She's yeah. done? Yeah, because she's going to be like 36, the next one. And one she's, go around. She's got some things to do in life. She wants to get back into doing some more engineering. And, and, uh, and yeah, it's just, you know, she's she she her goal – was to make it to the Olympics, she and they did, did. and I and I love that. So there you go. That's our Olympic talk. I'm obviously a big fan of badminton as well, and all the other sports that I've been watching. Badminton's electric. You know, I haven't really been getting into. I, I haven't. I have it on every day in my house. Really? Yeah, yeah. USA and NBCSN. I'm just going boom back and forth, back and nice. forth, back and forth. Have you gotten any good tips uh, watching the table tennis, the ping pong uh, for us <sighs> coming up on Thursday night? I just think we need to play fast. Fast, okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we fast got people that are electric, and they're just, I mean, their legs are moving, and their eyes are like laser beams. So mm-hmm. if you can somehow get laser beam eyes, and I can move my hands real fast, then we'll be all right. Now, do you have the ability, are, are you able to do, like, the serve or hit it where it's got, like, that, like, overspin? Like, no, the top spin? Absolutely you can't not. do that? I don't okay. understand the spinning program. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, are you big? I think you, I'm just going to feel it out. Okay. You know, yeah, yeah, if we yeah. get down there, it's like when you go bowling and, you know, sometimes it's the curve, you got the curve that's working and sometimes you just got to roll it straight. Yeah. No, I I get that. You know what I mean? Sometimes you get the spin and it rolls right into the right place. Sometimes it goes straight in the gutter. Exactly. We're so, going to be big. We're second set ping pong guys. You know what I mean? Like we're, we're going to use the first set to yes. do some recon. Sure. That'll be, you know, it's like our like Hall of Fame game, you know, like our, our, our like our, our, our preseason game. That gets us warmed up, the fine tune. You know what I mean? It's like in college football when you play like Southeastern Louisiana State week one, you know? Oh, and yeah. You just yes. fine tune everything. <laughs> yeah. Get ready for Florida State week two. Yeah. So, yeah. Southeastern, Northern. Uh, yes. 
Larison County. Yeah. Yeah. Football, All the yeah. community college. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. We'll get them in there. Yeah. Uh, so we do have that coming up. We're heading to Nashville. Connor's going today after we record. I'm going Thursday. We got a New Gardens ping pong tournament on Thursday night. Uh, but it's race week, man. Yeah. After uh, a month long break. Uh, we are finally getting ready, going to have some cars on the track, going fast. You got to be excited. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a lot of news this week as well. A lot of good stuff happening. We also we also had a wild F1 race over the weekend, mm-hmm. which was crazy. But What uh, was wild about it? Because I, I didn't follow. It would help break, break it down. That's true. You're not a big F1 guy. But we're yet. trying to diversify. We want a, our audience to really appreciate all forms of motorsport. Yeah. IndyCar is our favorite. Yeah. But we want everyone to appreciate both NASCAR, IndyCar, and Formula One because sure. I think that's respectful. And and dirt racing and SRX, all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. So Formula One, uh, wild start, Hungary, the Hungarian Grand Prix. Honestly, one of my favorite races. I was on the podium there. We should have had the pole there. Carmen Jorda blocked me. She's a very attractive woman, racing driver. <laughs> It's fine. Uh, you you, you tip your cap to her. She is very respectable. I, I actually like her a lot. She's a great person. But that one day she got in the way. It was tough. But uh, yeah, so we, I, I loved racing there. That was one of the first European tracks that I went to back in the day. Incredible fans there. So much support. But uh, obviously there's an intense battle going around right now between Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen. If you mm-hmm. don't know, just watch Drive to Survive on Netflix. <laughs> so they're but, rivals. Yeah, rivals. And they're battling for the world championship right now. And uh, track's a little wet at the start of the race, mm-hmm. which always makes it more exciting. And Lewis Hamilton's teammate decides to bomb it into turn one and basically crash half the field. So and when you say bomb it, does that mean just like, dude, we're, we're turning mistake. and we're just fucking yeah, going? He just made a mistake. It's a little slippery. You break about 10 feet too late. You wipe everyone out. Okay. So that was a a wild scene. It created a strategic opportunity for other people. Max Verstappen's car was damaged. So Lewis's do we think this was, was intentional oh, chance? I don't think so. I don't think you can plan that type of battering ram activity intentionally. Okay. But it did work out well for Mercedes. Got it. So it was... It was a wild, wild race because you had guys were, that were up at the front that aren't normally up at the front. Esteban Ocon, uh, Sebastian Vettel, um, running one, two most of the race, which is mm, rare. I think uh, o- Ocon's odds to win the race were 500 to one. Oh, wow. <laughs> so like if that goes to show you how crazy that was. The old long shot. The yeah. old long shot victory. Um so it ended up being a wild chase for Lewis Hamilton after a strategy mishap. You know, he's just trying to win. He's got a win to try and extend his lead against Max Verstappen. Max was still in the race, but had a bit of a damaged car. Mm-hmm. So it, I don't know. It, it was a wild, a wild battle. Uh, Lewis ended up getting up to third. Esteban Ocon won, but our good friend Fernando Alonso, uh, who finished, ended up finishing fourth, defended Lewis Hamilton, held him off for five to six laps, which really held which really gave the victory to his teammate who won Esteban Ocon. Mm-hmm. Great race, honestly. Incredible defensive battle from Fernando. Obviously, Fernando, Indy 500 qualifier, and one time not make the race, Indy 500 qualifier. Yep. Um, and it was it, it was great to watch, but a lot of chaos afterwards. You know what I mean? We had Sebastian Vettel got DQ'd. You know, you got Lewis Hamilton potentially, you know, almost passing out because he was tired. Like, a lot of activities in this F1 event, so... Way better than normal because F1 can sometimes be a little bit boring. Okay. So yeah. when you said that Alonzo was, you know, defending and everything like, you know, do you get to a point, whether it be IndyCar, F1, where you kind of know it's not your day, so then it becomes, you become the defender. So you're like, hey, it's not going to be my day to get podium or to, you know, take the checkered flag. So now my job is to defend, get in the way, fuck up this guy's day so my teammate can, that that's a thing. Uh, I think more so in Formula One, but okay. but without a doubt in racing in general, you, you got to defend your position no matter what. Even though the guy behind you could be faster, every point counts and every position counts. Yeah. And, you know, the more time that your enemy stays behind you, you know what I mean, the less time that the guys in front of you would have to deal with it. And, you know, one of them could be your teammate. So it's it's a, it's an interesting battle you're very very selfish out there in racing but in uh, much more so in formula 1 there's that team aspect right and i yep. think um 
Fernando did an incredible job defending for his teammate, and it, it ended up being a great race, which Hungary some, sometimes is a, a difficult place to race. So I, I think, again, Formula One is really playing up this rivalry between Lewis and Max, and there's a lot of stuff going on for them right now, which helps motor racing in general, because if people are excited about it, then that's good. Do we have a Lewis and Max in IndyCar at the moment? Oh, uh, I, I would say it's probably a Alex Alex Pillow and Patricio Ward. I would say they're... Like the two young guns. They're rivals, though? No, I don't like Well, see, there's not really big rivalries, but, like, those are the two guys that are up there fighting for the championship. Yeah. And, you know, they're both young, whereas Max is young in Formula One and Lewis is the elder statesman. Um, But I would say if you really want to compare it to someone, it's like the teammates Scott Dixon and Alex Pillow. You know what I mean? Because Alex is the young guy fighting for the championship. Okay. Scott's the old veteran who's still fighting for the championship Championship. again. So very, very similar to that, I would say. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Um, You said something about teammates and new teams, and right before we started recording today, news broke that we're getting another team coming back to IndyCar full-time 2022. Yeah, yeah, which I'm, I mean, that's great. Yunkos Racing, who is a team that I drove for when I was 18. Uh, We won the Pro Mazda Championship together. Nice. Um, vaulted me into Indy Lights and com- competition in Europe. It was uh, it's an incredible team. Ricardo Yunkos, um, Argentinian family, incredible people. I heard he's got a great story. I heard he came to America with a few hundred bucks. Yes, started his own go kart. Started his go kart team. I will never forget because that go kart team was around when I was a kid. Yeah, and then as I started progressing, he also got a team, and it was uh, I won their first championship for them. Nice. And uh, and it, and it was awesome to to be a part of. The, I I will forever consider them family, which is awesome. And uh, Ricardo has been so passionate about being back in IndyCar. They were in IndyCar for a little bit. Kyle Kaiser, yep, obviously, yep. incredible story, bumping our b- pal Fernando Alonso that we were just talking about uh-huh. out of the Indy Five Hundred. Was that twenty nineteen? Yeah, twenty nineteen, so. I believe. Um, Kyle Kaiser, he was the driver for me when I did my two seater. Oh, there you go. Uh, yeah. See, that's your guy. Around with him, yeah. <laughs> that's your guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's it's super exciting. So they're going to run the last three races this year as well. But I they did not announce a driver. So right, very Do curious. I have not heard anything. Any guesses? At all. I, I I have no idea. I don't know if it's going to be you know an, an an Argentinian go with the the country you know country representative, um, or is it you know they've got this guy Brad Hollinger I believe is the guy who's uh, who's also mm-hmm. involved in this team mm-hmm. who I, I know looks familiar, but. Yeah, it's going to be exciting to see who they pick um, or or who has the sponsorship to help them out. Because I I mean, we're going to have 28 cars potentially to get to the rest of this year. And that's a wild amount of Indy cars in racing, which I think is great. My, my buddy Jeremiah, who is biggest race fan that I know, he was texting me about it. And he said that um, this is... Similar to what what we're living through right now with IndyCar, similar to what he said was like the AFL NFL merger. He said that it's yes. It, 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 so it, so this is very exciting. I mean that that is a historic thing, obviously for the AFL for the NFL uh, for what it stands today. And now you're seeing um, all this uh, hype and all this uh, pro, what, what's the word uh, momentum 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 that's exactly happening in IndyCar. Right. Momentum is is just we're in a great spot right now. Yeah, and I think. The, the interesting thing is people started saying, oh, maybe we need bumping on road courses like the Indy 500. I said, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Like, you can't... Indy 500 has bumping because it's the Indy 500. You're not going to bump people out on road courses. Like, Why not? Let everyone... Because it, it would do too much damage to the business of the sport. You know what I mean? Why do people want to bump just because now there's getting to be so many cars? Well, I I think some tracks might not have big enough pit lanes for 28 cars. <laughs> so that might be like a real right? estate issue. Yeah. But um but yeah, I I I I I think that's the most ridiculous thing ever to bump people from road course racing because that it never used to be like that really back in the day. I mean, it was like that in Formula One. You had people trying to qualify; they weren't fast enough, et cetera. Um, but nowadays, I mean, just let them race. Like we gotta, we gotta, we gotta have cars. I think the more cars, the more exciting. Yeah. And, um, you know, keep the bumping to the Indy Five Hundred. I would say. Now, does the is the momentum that we're seeing is, is something like this with the Uncoast happening? solely because of the NBC and the TV deal coming or what, like what, what's the other reasoning that is behind this momentum that you think? I, 
I really don't know, to be honest with you. I, I, I think there's a lot of business being done in the paddock. I think people see that. I see. I think you see a lot of companies like, you know, DHL, PNC Bank, yeah. Fifth Third Bank, U.S. Air big, Force. Big. You know, all these, you know, Bitcoin is somehow involved. There's there's a lot of excitement being built around the sport. Um, and and I think that that pays off. And I think, obviously, the, the TV deal for sure is helpful. Mm-hmm. Massively helpful. Mm-hmm. Um, but also the fact that the ratings are going the right way as well. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, our, our ratings are going up. There's a lot of positivity. Um, and and obviously, like, America is coming back, too. You know what I mean? We got, we got full events. We got sellouts. We got people in the stands. People are excited to support sports again you know what i mean which i think is is super important yeah no it's it all it's all very very exciting and yeah i mean that that news broke and and so like you said the last three races they're gonna have a single car yes this year yeah but then in 2022 they're coming back full-time throughout the entire uh season right well that's so here's the here's the tough thing about that you can say that but until they deliver it, I'm, I'd be curious. Now, I have faith in Ricky. I do like Ricardo Yunkos a lot. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it, I think you can always announce that as your goal, but it's uh, and it's still hard to find that 4 to $6 million that you got to have to, yeah. you know, to run a car. And maybe he's already got that guy, right? Like, they didn't announce a driver, so maybe, you know, maybe it is someone who has, the, has enough funding to make that happen. How does this affect kind of driver-free agency? With, I don't know because new squad. I haven't heard anything about who they're putting in. Um, is it a young guy? Is it a, an experienced guy? Is it you know someone from Formula One? I don't know. So it'll be really interesting to see you know how that how that's taken care of and where they go with it. I think I saw a quote today. Uh, Marshall Pruitt put it up on Racer dot com r- uh, regarding the announcement. I think yeah, they said that they were like all options. You know, we kind of have our hand in every field talking with people talking with drivers you know yeah so makes sense could be anywhere absolutely yeah i mean that's so there yeah, so that, that's a lot of a lot of interesting stuff in motorsport has happened in the last couple of days which is great and yeah i mean we're we're nashville ready now i think we're there's a lot of exciting things going on um one other quick uh quick thing that i would like to say about my weekend just previously before we move on to uh this to upcoming people's weekend? questions. No, the the weekend that I just had. Okay, weekend that I just had. Okay. We had a, we had an incredible moment for a friend of mine. Oh yes, please do tell. We had an incredible one of our one of my my best friends. You know him as well, Deepu Sandi. Mm-hmm. Which I believe we will be having him on the on the podcast at some point. Absolutely, because I think there is going to be a section, a small small sector of the podcast. Uh, basically called Rick Mears Drunk History. And <laughs> <laughs> Rick Mears, obviously four-time Indy 500 champion, incredible Legend. racing driver. Yeah. Um, one of the greatest of all time. Like goats, the goat emoji is used when describing Rick Mears. Yep. Um, and anyway, Deepu is is his biggest fan. Uh, and Deepu's birthday was this weekend. That and jacket, by the way, that he had is just phenomenal. Absolutely. One of his sick. birthday gifts was indeed a 1988 Indy 500 champion jacket, which was tremendous. Signed by Rick Mears that said, uh, all gas, no brakes, Rick Mears. And he signs every autograph with a thank you at the end of it, which I respect. That is very cool. Yeah, very, very cool. Um, so Deepu loved that, loved his jacket. Did and, you get him uh, that? I did not. My Our buddy Steven did. Okay. And so we had something else cooked up in the chamber, though. We had a young James Hinchcliffe there with us. James ah, Hinchcliffe, yes. famous, very famous Canadian uh, motor racing pilot. Mm-hmm. Um, and he said, wait, I, I'm going to try to get Rick Mears to send Deepu a video. Like, send, like you know, like a little cameo, a cameo. right? Yeah, like yeah. A cameo. Rick Mears doesn't do that, obviously. Good. No, no, no not cameos. Big on cameo? Nope, not big <laughs> on cameo for Rick Mears for time. So what we did was... We somehow got Deepu's phone, put Rick Mears' phone number in Deepu's phone as four time with four trophies and four goat emojis, right? And at one o'clock in the afternoon, Rick Mears was going to call Deepu. How? How did? Who had the contact? Who made it happen? Well, we know Rick. Like I know Rick. James had Rick's phone number. Like James, we, we Rick's our guy. Okay, I mean, he's a fellow, you know, fellow IndyCar sure. guy. You know what I mean? He he's at the racetrack every weekend, spotting for Penske. So, all right, you know, he's there. He's working. He's in the field. And uh, when Rick Mears, and I obviously, 
this actually made me upset. One person, I tweeted this video, but one person on the internet said, is no one calling BS on this yet? I said, you really think that we wouldn't know Rick Mears and we wouldn't be able to make this happen for our, one of our best friends? Are you kidding me? Look at like, the jacket the man had. Look at I the mean, jacket. Geez. Like, we were going to get Rick Mears to call this man. So, old Ricky Mears yeah. calls Deepu, and it was an incredible scene. Deepu said, this is the greatest day of my life. <laughs> <laughs> and immediately went into every statistical fact about Rick Mears that Rick didn't even know. Deepu did not miss a beat. He went in there. He said, "I tell you what, I, I was there in '82 when you sh when they overfilled you on that last stop. We should have had five. Oh, he yeah, said. He dude, said we should have had five. So Deepu, obviously being a part of the team that he wasn't a part of, he said we should have had five. Yeah. <laughs> as in that was his victory as well. And uh, Deepu has also created a day for 29 Rick Mears Day because he won four in 13 years or whatever, and he had six pull. There's a b bunch of numbers to that. He led 429 laps, the Indy 500, et cetera. And Rick Mears was laughing his face off, apparently. Nice. And uh, I will forever be thankful to Rick Mears for making Deepu's life, uh, having a three-minute and 35-second conversation with him on the telephone. And uh, it was one of the funniest things that I've ever witnessed. If you, I have tweeted... A minute and a half of the video if you want to see it. Um, it's worth it, the watch. It is, it is definitely, you know, we were at brunch having a nice time. Deepu uh -huh. had a couple, you know, a couple Tito's OJs. Absolutely. And uh, But he was feeling ready for action. So that was my, potentially the greatest story from from our weekend uh, over this past weekend. Yeah. I mean, you could you could just feel the happiness and, and, and passion coming through the video by Deepu. He uh -huh. was... I mean, the man... All day long, too. The rest of the day, he's like, I spoke to the goat today. The spoke man was Mears. rattling off everything you can imagine. I mean, he was ready. He was not... You know, sometimes when people meet their heroes, they can get a little, you know, a little gun-shy, <laughs> yeah. a, little, a, little, a little choked up and everything. That was not the case uh, Did not for Deepu, you know? And, and what's even better is, you know, it's uh, the first day of August. It's, you know, 80 degrees, whatever, and he's just rocking this... A jacket. This classic starter jacket yeah. looking. I mean, just rocking it hard, as hard as ever. So, yeah, it's eighty five degrees, and he's got a jacket on. I don't on. blame him. I mean, it was very respectful, and honestly, just one of those racing moments that if you appreciate racing, and and hopefully a lot of people that listen to this will appreciate racing, you know, in the future. Yeah, it was a great moment. It was. I loved it. I was very happy for for Deepu. That's very good. Is he going to be in Nashville? Oh yeah, everyone's coming to yeah, Nashville. Coming if Nashville. you're not in Nashville, you're doing the wrong thing. Gonna, in your okay, life. very good, very good. Um, so what? I mean, real quick, your your expectations for Nashville? I had lunch with Hench yesterday. He was kind of running me through, you know, a lot of braking. We don't really know, you know. There, 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 there's, there's the big braking guys. The, the, there's the 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 pay. You know, the, we're worried a little bit about the course itself, maybe because you know it's new pavement that they're putting down. The very hot, it's supposed to be very hot in Nashville. What I mean, what are we thinking? Uh, the heat's not awesome. I, I definitely don't like the um, the heat's going to be tough. Street courses right now have the least air yeah. movement. However, going over a body of water, maybe that provides some nautical exposure. You know what I mean? Some some ocean air or some river water. Nice Obviously, breeze. it's not an ocean because it's in Nashville. I was gonna say, I think you're, you're but maybe more, a watery breeze. <laughs> I think you're, you're more <laughs> looking for that to cause just a bunch of swamp, dude. Just swamp ass. You I, know, I don't what? know about the breeze. Okay, so maybe there's no water <laughs> breezes. I'm not a big nautical expert, but uh, but yeah, I, it, it's going to be hot. That's going to be tough on the drivers for sure. We're going to be we're going to be dead after the race. I can yeah. promise you that. So, uh, but I'm excited for it. The track looks great. I mean, but the track also looks concerning. You know what I mean? Because we're like, hey, this is some of the tightest sections that we've got on on, on, on our schedule. Mm -hmm. And we just hope that, you know, it works out all right. And I think that there's enough people involved. When you get enough good people involved and you invest enough money into it, it can't fail, right? Yeah. So I, I, I think that they've done an incredible job. And as drivers, though, we, you know, we got to think about it, right? Like, we're thinking about what is this going to be like? And we're, you know, you're a little concerned until you get out there. And then yeah. as soon as we do our first session, boom, we'll have all kinds of information. You're letting it rip. Yeah. Exactly. Very good. It's, um, yeah, man, golly, this has been the longest four weeks. Dude. I mean, just like, <laughs> I'm just so ready for yeah. Friday to, to summer break hear has the gone on too long. Yeah. To hear the cars uh, revving up and going and be down there. I mean, I, I absolutely cannot wait. So it's, it's going to be a great weekend for everybody. I think, uh, you want to do a little, uh, WTFI news. I gotta, I gotta drop the story on you here. That's fine. Yeah, okay. we can do that. Let's do that. Are you experiencing FODA? You I don't heard, know what that is. Have you heard of this? 
It's fear of dating again. Uh, photo. No. Like pho- no, you're I don't not. have any fear anymore. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> I used to have fear when I had a bowl cut. Uh, Foda is the new FOMO. Scary dating trend for singles after COVID-19. Um, it starts, it's been a year since Eric Buttleman went on a date. The 26-year-old TV director um, can't entirely blame the long laps on a bad pickup lines. He says, I was stuck in so many talking phases online with women during lockdown. None of it transpired into a real date. And that brought on not the greatest feelings. He's experiencing FODA, a fear of dating again during pandemic times. According to a recent study from the dating site Hinge, more than half of the app's users have been stricken by the newfound phobia. It says, quote, this is the biggest new trend we've seen among daters. The report from May read, noting Mm. that 44% of relationship seekers are stricken by FODA. So... It says that 38% of singles are, quote, nervous about their social skills when it comes to dating again in real life. Nah. (laughs) Not hitting you? No. I thought everyone who got locked down for a long time, I thought... uh I thought we wanted to get out on the streets. I think I think they do. I've seen a lot of people getting out on the streets just living life. <laughs> I think they do, but I think that they're a little worried about their conversation skills. Well, then do better. A little worried about some awkwardness. <laughs> Look, I, 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 I'm not necessarily an expert at walking up to the bar and being sure. like, hey, let's have a conversation. I mean, I don't, I don't like those awkward moments either. I yeah. really don't. And I'm, and I'm, you know, I'm fortunate enough to – you know, have some friends and have met some people via the Instagram direct messages. Yep. And and there's a lot of connection there because that's easier than going up to people in real life for sure, I think. So yeah. I like to make an early connection via the internet only to go in, boom, hey, we chatted. How are we doing? Once we establish a make little that. bit of a, uh, you know, initial game point, right? Then we go from there. So you're saying this shouldn't be a problem for these folks because, yeah, you make a connection online. Because they've only been online, talking to people on the internet. Yeah. But then because of that connection, then you can go up to them. You feel better because it's not just cold turkey at the bar. Hey, what's happening, mama? Exactly. Yeah. Hey, hey yeah. I mean, what are you going <laughs> to – I don't even know what to say to random people, like random women at the bar now. It's like, hey, do you want a Vegas bomb? Or like, what? Well, <laughs> how do you feel about cold beers? I don't know. I'm a bourbon guy. It's like, are you, would you like some uh, – Old Fitzgerald, 14 years. Yeah. She's like, who are you? Get away from me. <laughs> <laughs> they say, I quote, I think there's a lot of people expressing the concern of, oh, I forgot how to do this. They say the wheels are rusty. Yeah, I never knew how in the first place, so. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, this, you're a married guy, so you don't have to yeah, worry about it Yeah, I know, anymore. but this seems like it's just something that people are really trying to, like, it's just something else that people can just be like, I'm experiencing photo because of COVID, you know, oh, like something for other people it, to yeah. bitch about. Someone, something for people to be worried about or complaining about. Yeah, it's just like, come on. Fear of death. Get I mean, like, in the game. Right. Just I mean, get out in the world, communicate. If it doesn't go great, guess what? Lock and load. And get back in the game again. On to the next one. On yeah. to the next one. I agreed. Yeah. They're I, not all, you know, they're not all locks. You know what I mean? It's more fish in the sea. Yeah. A lot of fish lot swimming. Of fish in the sea, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I live in that sea. <laughs> <laughs> you just got your head on a yeah. swivel. I got waterfront property. <laughs> <laughs> fish is everywhere, dude. I got waterfront property. <laughs> all right. So, FOTA. 40% of people scared to get out and about. Uh, pretty soon, yeah, it's just like we're all live in a robot world where, like, there literally isn't any physical contact because everybody's just going to be like, oh, the internet is so much better and we can just, you know, I can deal with rejection and or say things I don't want to say and it's better. So, yeah. It'll be interesting. Uh, whew, scary times Heading that way. Ahead. Scary, scary times yeah. ahead. Just dropping into the war zone. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's go uh, a little red, yellow, green. Got a oh, couple yeah. here um, from at Jeremiah Morrill. Red, yellow, green on drivers going out on Broadway this week slash weekend. Oh, giving that a green light. <laughs> oh, a green flag there, <laughs> dropping it. Hammer down on that one. That's um, why you're going down Tuesday? Give yeah, yourself a little extra yep, yep, time? Yep, 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 No, I, so look, the, the, the funny thing about that question is I think everyone thinks that I go out all the time. Realistically, I do not. I'm a very, very, de- I had two weeks yeah. of summer break where I went after. I had a great time. Yes. But let me tell you what, the last two weeks, I've trained twice a day, every day. I didn't even, I had a friend's birthday over the weekend. Didn't even drink alcohol. Really? I, I was fully dedicated. Waters, soda waters. That's what it's all about. Um, uh, soda water is nice because it gives off the illusion that yep, you're drinking yep, vodka. Put a little lime in there. Yeah, put a little yep, lime in there. Exactly. 
Um, so, so yeah, but, but I'm going down to Nashville early to check it out. I do want to, you know, I do want to check out Broadway. I've never been down there. I want to, I want to see what the vibe is. Right so. Um, but for sure, Sunday night in Nashville, I think if, if all the drivers aren't passed out dehydrated because it's going to be so hot and, 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 and deathly heat strokey type scenarios, um, I think you'll see us going out. On, so on the the Sunday night. has the hydration started for you? I mean, you got to be heavily yeah. starting to hydrate already for the weekend. Yeah, like you, you couldn't. We're not necessarily gonna. You couldn't go out and have beers Thursday and then get in the car Friday, right? I mean, it's it's just it, that takes away from your hydration. It takes yes. away from what you've got stored in your body. It takes away from your water reserve. It's just not good. So yeah, so we we gotta we gotta be as ready as possible for Sunday, and that really starts probably Wednesday, Thursday ish. See. That, you know, I would say green light as well, and but I'm because we like to have fun, right? And I'm green light as well because you know, look you know, from my, I'm like, hey, Thursday night we got the ping pong tournament, going to off track recording uh, after that. So these I'm are like, fun things. Everything's You're gonna, gonna have be a cold out. beer. I'm gonna have a few. You know, members will be out, might as well. And then Friday night, I'm going to Graham Ray Hall's uh, moonshine party. What? Yeah. Yeah, moonshine party. I'm gonna yeah, like I said, I'm gonna uh, didn't even know those were real. Where the uh, yeah, it's like a it's Sugarland moonshine something or a sponsor. I don't know. You should Going wear to your that. Takuma Sato the- shirt today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, or uh, bust out the old Jack Harvey. You yeah, know, there get, you go. Get ready for the this new is guy. Our guy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, and then Saturday, I actually have. See, this is why I want it to be green light. But that's obviously I understand. It's very risky. Yep. Saturday night. Uh, the OG Tin Roof is setting me up with a party, uh, you know, f- you know, some flyers what? And promoting, yeah, the OG <sighs> Tin Roof down in Nashville. So that's where it's like, is I, that the I, one on Broadway or the one in that other little town? Uh, whatever the little, it's like not far away. It's not far away. It's like two blocks south of Broadway. Yeah, I was gonna say that because there's two of them. I it, heard yeah. from a local representative down there. It's the OG one. It's like the original Tin Roof. That's awesome. And so that we're gonna have a little party there, but that's where I'm just like, ah. I know it's tough driver the next day, but I cool would love to go there. Yeah, but I, I, uh, uh, you don't, maybe I'll swing by. You could with, get a bottle of water, have a water, put soda. some Mio in it. Uh-huh. Maybe, you know what I mean? Make it look like it's red water. Sure. That, that's what I'm saying. Everybody, all, all, all you guys are welcome. Exactly. But, you know, the offer's on the table. Thank you. There you go. Um, from Hesselberg 88, red, yellow, green on Acme Feed and Seed. Now, you've never been down to Nashville, really, so you're probably not very familiar with this place. I have no idea what this is. Acme Feed and Seed is... I thought it was a gardening thing. <laughs> right? I mean, it, you would think. Yeah. It's uh, the bar that is the closest to the river on the corner of Broadway. It's got oh. a rooftop. It's a very popular... I think it's like one of the ones that like all the IG girls go and like take oh, pictures at and everything. I like those. But it's got a rooftop. It's right there in the corner. Acme Feed and Seed. Ah... I'm going to go yellow on this <laughs> just because it's not sold. It's such like Acme, it's not Acme, you know, it's like, okay, there's other, there's, there's <laughs> go a little bit down the strip, you know, there's, there's cool stuff it's down there grimy. as well. It's, uh, it's, it's cool to go. Like you should definitely go to Acme feed and seed because you've never been down there. <sighs> All right. I'm going to, I'm going to wave the green flag on it because green, yeah. it sounds, if it's influencery, I want to see what these people look like. You and know what I mean? A, I want to see. I want to see what I want to see. Influencers in the wild. And That's the, like, it's like a it's like a an exotic sport. Yeah, absolutely. You'll see plenty. And 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 the rooftop view is very good. It wow, really is. I love that. Yeah, I love rooftops. And there's plenty of them on Broadway. I mean, they're everywhere. <sighs> Seriously, it's the whole thing. Love that. Um, last one, red, yellow, green. Uh, from Andy T. Ward. Most drinks daily has had the day before a race. I think that's just a question. <laughs> what, what, are we, what, <laughs> yeah, what, flag, what flag are we supposed to wave to I that? Don't know. I, the, Green? I figured, I, figured no, like, I put it in there. No, I waved the yellow flag on that because that's not encouraged. Yes. Um, I've never I've never drank the day before a race, honestly. I, I really have that. not. It did. In my face, I know it looks like it, and my body, I'm sure, promotes the fact that, look, hey, this guy might have a couple brews before uh, yeah. a race. I, I don't think so. I think the only thing that we would ever have – uh, sometimes if we're going out for, for a nice dinner, um, like if you're going out with Mario and Marco Andretti, guess what you're going to have? Probably a glass of wine. Yeah. We're going to have a nice little glass, a uh, little glass of Andretti wine because we're respectable adults. Night before the race. And Mar- yeah, yeah. You can have, you can have one wine. glass, right? Just Cleans one. Out the toxic, That's it. Just yeah, one. The toxins. Yeah. Um, but it's only something classy like that or, you know what I mean? Everything else than that, it's usually, uh, 
It's a no from me, dog. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I, I would say back in the day, you know, after a practice day, you go out with your crew guys, you have a, you'll have a beer with the guys, you know sure. what I mean? Just one. Uh, or the boys will come by the motor home at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and, uh, you know, maybe grab a, grab a claw out, yeah. of, out, of the, out of the fridge that I got for them. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but I, I usually won't, usually 99.9% .9 of the time not have a drink. Um, you know, the day before the race, as, as Marco Andretti told me, 24 hours bottle of throttle, 24 hours bottle of throttle. I like so that. You, you definitely need to be off the gas 24 hours before you're on the throttle. I like that. Yeah. 24 That's hours bottle worthy. to throttle. Yeah. Very good. Huh. But it could be the opposite way for people who aren't the drivers. 24 hours. So starting 24 hours before the throttle is thrown down. That's when you start really going. That's when you go hammer down the bottle. Yeah, no, that's, that's, a, that's a crime. <laughs> Not for the drivers, yeah, yeah. but for all of us. That's yeah, yeah, you we'll guys do. are all in, yeah. Yes, okay. Um, all right, let's wrap it up. Let's do a random Indy 500 driver of the week. The Ricky Treadway random Indy 500 driver Is, of the is week. Ricky Treadway sponsoring this now? I think he's the OG. I think it's uh, just he's his He's OG segment. guy, yeah. yeah. like it's 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 his. Uh, well, so you're going to need to Google this, man. We're going to need to uh, Firing get it up. you on the Googleizer. Firing it up. Uh, this is the 1989 Indianapolis 500, which my father was a part of. My oh. father, Derek Daly, was a part of. But uh, there's a young American man uh, who's probably not young, but uh, Randy Lewis. Is our guy Man. Randy Lewis? I don't know much about Randy Lewis if I'm if I'm honest. Okay, but he's an American man, and I have heard his name before. So give me if there's any history on the Wikipedia's. Pretty let us know. Okay, yeah, I mean, pretty solid here for Randy Lewis. Randy um, Lewis, actually, his name is John Ranson Lewis the Third. Oh, and he goes by Randy. So he's a, a king of some place. Yeah, so I mean, he, he owns some real estate in Ransom United Kingdom. Ransom just sounds wild. He's from <laughs> Charlotte. Old John Ransom. John Ransom. Yeah, he's from Charlotte, North Carolina. That's where Did he kill born. Abe Lincoln? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <Dude. right>? he's, <laughs> anytime you get the, the, the triple name in there, John yeah. Ransom Lewis. Yeah, he definitely needs to be in like a National Geographic special or something. Um, he's a five-time starter of the Indy 500. Five-time, baby. Best starting position was 11th in 1988 and 1989. Bingo. Back-to-back -back years, 11th. His best finish was 14th in 1990. And 90. Okay, so this is wild. So he started 11th in 98, or in 88, 89. He finished 14th in 90, 91. So he's just bam, bam. He's pretty consistent, you know? Randy Lewis, consistency guy. His last race at the Indy 500 was 1991. Oh, year I was born. Um, yes. And nice. his 81 cart starts, his best finish was an 8th in 1987. Started his career in Formula 3 in Europe and gradually moved up to the Formula 5000. So, yeah, consistency, yes, is the key here I love for that. old John we, Ranson. We learned something about John Ranson today. Yes. Randy Lewis. Randy. I believe that— The third, too. I have, Yeah. I See, this is what we're learning about. I'm learning things today. You're learning things today. Mm -hmm. Now Randy Lewis is our guy. He's not quite as good as Racing Gardner, I don't think. Racing Gardner still no, but top, his, top five guy. But the name no, but his results wise, results, yeah, definitely. You know, he raced uh, for Dale Coyne Racing. Oh, yep, that's I raced for Dale uh, Coyne Racing. Dick Simon Racing. Yep, big teams. Uh, uh huh. So I mean, you know, not you know, respectable. Solid. Randy Lewis. Randy Lewis. Not Sean a winner, Manson. but uh, he's got three names. Yes, which uh, I respect. He's got three names, and he's the third. So <laughs> all the way around, man. Got a love for that. Randy. All right, dude. Um, good stuff. Uh, another one in the books. Yeah. Big weekend in Nashville ahead. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. Best of luck to you, of course. Thank you. I'll see you down there. I'm sure we'll chat in the paddock or somewhere and, uh, you know, open for, for great results. And then uh, next week we'll be able to uh, come on and give the full rundown of the weekend. A little rundown, weekend rundown. And don't forget the race this weekend, NBCSN. Late afternoon race, yep. but NBCSN. So you better find us right there. NBCSN, I think 5, 5.30 is when yes. uh, Green Flag. A little late afternoon yeah. race. Not a night race, but a late afternoon race. Yep. So we'll do that. Uh, we'll recap next week. And um, yeah, we'll fire it up then.